Hello students, welcome to my YouTube channel and today we are going to continue the discussion on the chapter transport in India and this is the second video on the chapter. The link of the previous video is in the description as well as it will also appear above in the suggestion card. So students in the previous video we discussed the roadway system. Today I am going to discuss the railways and waterway system in India. Before we move on to the channel as video, please subscribe my channel and do press the bell icon also. Railways. Now, railways is considered as carries the utmost important in all the transportation network in India. And the first railway line was established between the Mumbai and Thane in the year 1800. 53. It is the lifeline like railways is also considered as a lifeline of our country and uh, it was operated till independence okay till a uh, few years after the independence also it was operated by 41 such systems of railways were present in India but it was all nationalized in the year 1951 and it was brought under one unit the Indian railways okay so unlike the roadways it all the you know the whole railways are uh, controlled and monitored by the central government it also provides the suburban transport system like uh, the metros in some of our mega cities and other few cities also and the railways is considered to be the most uh, convenient and preferred mode of transportation for the long distances for passengers and to provide a better management facilities okay and operations in the railways the government has uh, divided the railways into seven different zones okay and the headquarters spread all over the country the northern plains of india is much more concentrated with the railway network compared to the southern zone okay now the reason behind that is it was uh, quite uh, difficult to lay down the railway systems in southern part because of the rough topography present there okay whereas the northern plains have a flat topography which makes it much more easier for you know construction of the railway uh, lines so student there are three different types of railway gauges in india or you can say the track system okay there are the broad gauge meter gauge and narrow gauge so what is a gauge now gauge means the inner distance between the two tracks on any railway route is termed as railway gauge okay so on the basis of the distance there are three broad categories are there so first let us discuss the narrow gauge now narrow gauge uh, the distance between the two tracks is around 762 millimeter or 2 feet and 6 inches and uh, it consists only of 2 to 5 percent of the total railway network in India and it is located somewhere uh, like in the uh, no hill stations only like the dazzling uh, toy train okay which is considered to be the um, world heritage by the UNESCO next is the meter gauge which is of as the name suggests here the distance is of one meter and uh, nearly about 25 percent of the railway lines in India is of uh, this meter gauge next is the broad gauges now broad gauges the distance is 1.676 uh, meter 5 feet 6 inches and uh, 85 percent of the railway lines which are present in our country is of broad gauges okay next is the standard gauge which has been mentioned over there that is for the metro lines let us discuss the advantages of railways also now railways is considered to be uh, advantageous for the faster movement of bulky raw materials finished goods as well as perishable goods to the distance places and uh, you know uh, and the play and uh, the market places in a very short period of time okay and it also enables the quick and efficient relief work on a large scale during the natural calamities also so during the time of war or the internal strife the movement of the police and the troops also become very easier through the railways and it is must uh, you know comfortable and cost effective for the long distance transport and since all the you know the railway lines are unified under one unit that is the indian railways so it is also important means of national integration among all the indians now let us discuss some of the disadvantages now the railway lines lack flexibility like roadways it cannot provide you know the day door-to-door -door service and it is difficult to lay down the railway lines in the rough 
terrain, uneven terrain also. Now, long distance transport is more time consuming compared to the air transport and efficiency and success of the road transport is dependent upon the uh, roadways okay uh, because roadways are the uh, you know the feeder routes now accidents in the railways are not uh, very rare but if it occurs the deaths and the injuries will occur in a large scale it is a source to the noise pollution as well as the air pollution and it is also a very soft target for the terrorist attack so the railway security is a major financial burden on the government Next is the water transport or the waterways in India. Now, it is the oldest and the cheapest mode of transportation in India. And with the advancement of the road and rail and the other like, you know, air transport, the passenger transportation by waterways has lost its popularity. However, in India, it's still some of the uh, important uh, waterway systems are still in use. For example, in the northeastern part of the country, Ganga Brahmaputra belt, okay, some uh, backwaters in southern India as well as the canals are still in use for the, you know, uh, transportation of goods and passengers. And advantages of waterways. Since I have already mentioned, it is the cheapest mode of transport for the transportation of heavy and bulky goods also, okay, because it is cost effective because here, you know, the boats can move with the help of the uh, current of water also. So it is also fuel efficient uh, as well as cost effective and the construction and maintenance of the port is very less compared to the uh, other modes of transportation as well as it will have less traffic congestion like unlike to the roadways and railways let us discuss the disadvantages of waterways it is completely dependent upon the weather condition okay bad weather condition may lead to the accidents in the waterway system also and uh, it also needs a very long traveling hours and hence it is time consuming compared to the other modes of transportation and its accessibility is limited okay wherever the water is navigable available for navigation that only can be utilized whereas the interior location will remain out of reach from the waterway system many of the indian ports are also not well connected to its hinterland okay uh, so as a result the cost of inland transportation will also increase and the transportation of the raw materials will not be very swift and it will not be very you know in the uh, time okay so this may incur a huge loss in the long run business also so it should be well connected to the a uh, hinterland with the other modes of transportation so we will end our uh, chapter video here students and uh, thank you for watching and the next video will be on the different types of waterways and airways thank you